All right, now we know how to use Magento's Go support. We know how to actually send emails, how to go and look through the solutions library, how to use the knowledge database, and we know how to actually get into a chat with some of the Magento Go representatives. So right now we're actually ready to start building our store. Now I have logged back into my account and this is the main dashboard here. So if I look on the right hand side here, I'll find two buttons. The first button is actually manage store and the second one is view store. So first of all, let's go ahead and view our store as it is at the moment. So I'll just click on this button here. All right, now this will open a new page and here I can see my my store, how it currently looks. Well, nothing, nothing special. There is no items present in my store at the moment because I have not added any items at the moment as well. Here at the bottom, I'll find some um, links to contact us, customer service, sitemap and so on. Now this will come already built. So when you choose a theme, this will already be there. And the most important thing here is actually this message at the top. So the message actually says that this site is still under construction and that no orders can be actually placed. And of course, we do not have any items here to place any orders for anyway. So let's go ahead and we'll actually close this window and we'll go back to our main dashboard. The second button here, Manage Store, will actually allow us to go and change things about our store. So I'll click on it now. And this now will bring me to the dashboard of my store. You might be actually asked before you get into your dashboard to log in. So once again, using your details, your username and your password, just log in. And then you will, bro and then you will be brought to this screen here. So let's take a couple of moments to actually see what information is available here. Basically right here, we will find the orders. Now we do not have any orders and thus we do not have any data found in here. Also we can select how we would like to be displayed. So we can go from 24 hours all the way to like two years. And also we can click here on this tab and we can find some amounts of actual money that we have earned or the uh, money that we have got for our sales. Going down the page, you'll find your revenue, the tax, shipping, and the quantity. Once again, we haven't sold anything, we do not have anything in our store, and all of this is actually zero. Here at the bottom, we'll find the best sellers, most mostly viewed products, new customers, and customers in general. On the left hand side, we'll find the lifetime sales, so all the sales that we have made. We have made zero sales, zero dollar sales, as we are just opening our store. Uh, there is an uh, there is also an average of zero dollars per order per item that we have sold once again we haven't sold anything we can also have a look at the last five orders made we can have a look at the five we can have a look at the last five search terms and right at the bottom we'll find the top five search terms so once again all of this data is zero 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 because we do not have anything in our store and we have not sold anything Looking at the main menu here, we'll find the dashboard, we'll find sales, catalog, design, customers, promotions, newsletters, CMS, reports, system and add-ons. Throughout this series of video tutorials, we'll be using this menu here. But now, because we do not have our web store still online, we actually going to use this menu here, start my store. So once again, this message here is still displayed. So our store is still not alive and it's still not on the web. So basically we will have to go and actually build our store first. So if I click here, the eight required steps will be displayed. Now this is the steps that actually you have to take to actually make your website available on the internet. So some of these are actually setting up details. So for example, set language. So here you would set your preferred language for your website. Now some of these actual steps come already preset and you will see that by this little tick here so if you have a little tick like this next to your text that actually means that that has already been set so let's go ahead and we'll have a look how to set the language so a new window like this will pop out so basically you would have to go here and select one of the available uh, languages here so I'm pretty happy with English United States I'll choose it and just go submit Alright, now that we have actually selected the language for our 
store let's go ahead and let's actually go into contact information now this contact information is actually the information about your store that will be available to your customers so this is a point of contact for your customers so let's go ahead and have a look what's actually in the set store contact info Alright, this has already been set up for me and just make sure that you fill all the fields that actually have this little asterisk or star. So basically we need to enter the name of your store, the email address, this is the posting address. So if you want you can enter your postal address here as well. You have to choose your country, your region, the zip code, the city and then you can enter your phone number if you wish to. So once you have done all this, just hit at the bottom at the submit. And this will now submit and save the changes to your store information. Okay, now we're back to the dashboard and actually I would like to minimize this and show you this message here. So it will say actually here that the store contact info has been saved. So let's go back to our start my store menu and we'll actually go to step number three. Step number three is design. Now this is where you actually get to design how your store looks like. So basically you can go and select and customize your design or actually you can go and set your store logo. So first of all let's go and choose select and customize your design. And then the Magento Go system will inform you that you can actually select the professionally designed theme that you can apply to your store and then you can use something that's called a design settings editor or you can use CSS editor to actually achieve that look and feel of your site that you would like so in a way to actually get it personalized to your likes so once again we'll go here and we'll just click on continue this will now bring us to the theme editor in the theme editor first of all on the left hand side you'll find the current themes now the website theme they are currently using is this one here just down below you'll find some links to actually customize preview and cancel your current theme. On the right hand side you'll find some things which are available and which you can use for your site. You can browse by using these little buttons here and then you can choose which theme you would like. Now there's going to be another video specially designed just for theme optimization. So we're just going to leave this as it is and we'll come to it a bit later when we're actually doing some customization of our themes. So basically I will just go back to the dashboard. Alright, and then I will go to start my store again. I will go to number 3 and then I will go to set your store logo. Another small pop-up window will show up and here you will actually select first of all your the logo for your store website then the logo for your emails and then the logo for your fave icon. Now first of all the logo for your store will be something that's going to be displayed on your website. So this is the logo that will probably appear somewhere around here. The next one down is the logo for the emails. So basically when you're sending some newsletters or when you're sending emails you will create some sort of a logo that's going to display together with your emails or your newsletter. And then the last one down the list is actually something that's going to dis be displayed right at the top of your page. So currently this fave icon is displayed here. So this is the Magento's fave icon here. So you can actually display your own image here. Alright, so let's go ahead and we'll choose some files. So first of all, I will choose my logo for my uh, store website. Alright, I have already made some uh, logos that I would like to use and of course because this is just for a demo I have just made some very simple logos of course when you're doing a proper website store you would have your logos which will probably look a lot better and maybe you can get some professional to actually design your logo and actually meet your likes and needs so I'll, I'll just select my logo here and I'll just click on open now one more thing that actually you can see is that there's different allowed file types here so you can see that for my uh, store logo I have only three different types which is the same for my logo for the emails however when I'm dealing with my fave icon I can actually see that there is a few more available and supported file types alright so let's go and choose a logo for my email so this is my email logo and lastly I will choose my fave icon logo 
Alright, once I have done this, I will just hit on submit. Alright, now this has been submitted and saved and let's minimize this once again and here I'll find the message. The email was successfully saved, my fav icon was successfully saved and my store logo was successfully saved. So basically now we have added some logos to our store. Let's go back. And let's go to number four. Step number four is all about your plan. Now, remember that we're still dealing and we're still using the three version. So basically, if you would like to change your version, you could go here and you can select select your plan, and then you'll be able to select a different plan. And here, and here you can see the message that um, as your business grows, Magento Go can grow with you. So as your business grows larger, you will probably select a larger plan which would meet your needs. Step number five is all about actually adding the products to your site. So currently there are no products or no items available on our store, in our store, on our website. And therefore when we want to add new items, we would actually go here and we will choose create new product. Or we can actually go and import your existing products. Once again, a video will be dedicated just for adding new products or new items to your store. So therefore, I will not cover this in this tutorial. The next one down the list is step number six, which is the payments. And you can actually see that the payments has this little circle, which is white inside. So basically what that means is that only some portions of this step have been completed. So my PayPal Express checkout setup has been completed, but none of the others have actually been completed. Once again, one of the future videos will go into how you would set up your PayPal, how you would say your other payment options, and how to actually set the how to actually set and calculate the tax. When it comes to shipping, once again, we'll go into more details about shipping and how to set shipping options as well in one of the future videos. And the last step you will have to do is actually you would have to go to step number eight and you would have to launch your store. When you do that, this message here will disappear and your store will be available and will be live so people can actually go and buy stuff and order stuff from your, from your web store. So basically I'll just collapse this. I would like to actually close it and go back to my main dashboard and now we'll have a look at our store. Alright, so now we can see some changes. My main logo has been displayed now on my page and also if you go at the top you can see that my logo also has been displayed. Everything else remains the same. So I have not changed the theme once again. The themes will be covered in one of the future videos, how to actually change them, how to customize them and so on. So basically we have seen how to do some basic, real basic stuff that are needed to actually get our uh, store online and how to actually get it going. Well, basically it's not still online. It is online, but it's still not live as we do not have any items. So we will add some items and then configure everything else and then we'll go back to that step number eight and we will make our store live.